Hello and welcome to another devlog. This time we are talking about fish, but first if you haven't watched the previous devlogs, be sure to do so by clicking the link in the description or the info card in the top right corner. And if you want to follow along with the devlogs, be sure to subscribe. So early on I had an idea for spawning fish. I wanted the type of fish to be based on the depth, and the depth to be based on where the player is. So basically, the water gets deeper as the player moves further from the island. I thought this would be a pretty good way to add a sense of progression, so as the player gets up upgrades, they can move further and get there faster. I want most of the fish to spawn around the middle depth, so if a player is in an area that's say 200 meters deep, the majority of the fish are going to spawn around 100 meters down. I thought that picking the depth from a normal distribution would be a good way to do this. Unfortunately, Unity only knows how to select random numbers uniformly, and I didn't really want to write a complex algorithm to get a normal distribution, so instead I used the central limit theorem, which is pretty straightforward. The central limit theorem basically says if you take a few uniformly distributed random numbers and average them, the distribution of the averages will converge on a normal distribution. I wrote a quick test in Python to visualize this. This just picks a few random numbers and averages them. It does this 10,000 times and then plots the probability of getting each number as an average. I played with the number of samples for a bit to get the shape that I liked. More samples gives the distribution a sharper peak and limits the extreme ends, while fewer samples moves more toward a uniform distribution. Now I just needed a way to determine the depth of the ocean at any given point. Since I used a terrain for the ocean floor, and Unity's terrains have a method that return the height at a given point, I was able to determine the depth pretty easily. I take the max depth, which is just the lowest point on the terrain, and then subtract the height. I remapped the final value so the results are similar to what you would see in the real world without having to have extreme height differences in the terrain. You can see the depth for each new fish at the bottom of the screen in the console. Most of the fish will spawn around the center, but there's still potential for some to spawn at the extreme ends. I was making a lot of progress, so I decided I should start working on a player model too. My movement system broke the second I switched from the capsule to this model, and I'm still not sure why, so I had to spend some time fixing that. I'll talk about it a little more later since I want to stay on the topic of fish for now. I just didn't want to continue without acknowledging the new player model. I should also mention that I've been tweaking the water shader, so you may see some changes to that too. Another major step for the fish was adding an object pooling system. Now instead of instantiating and destroying a fish prefab all the time, there's just a pool that are always there and I can use them whenever I need to. This is mostly just to improve the performance. I have to thank both Brackies and Game Dev Guy for their tutorials. I'll link to both of them in the description. Now, with the depth being assigned to each fish, I moved on to selecting the type of fish based on the depth. You can see the type of fish being caught in the bottom left, and I have a few different fish just for testing right now. But by using scriptable objects, it's really easy to add any fish that I want. I just have to make a model for each one and fill in a little bit of information then add it to a list of all the types of fish, and it's ready to be caught. I'm trying to do something similar for the fish finder, where I keep a list of all the possible tiers. I can create any new fish finder in exactly the same way as the fish, and then add it to the list, and all I have to do is keep track of which tier the player is at. I think I've gotten the fish to the point where I just have to start modeling them and adding them into the game, so I'll probably move on to some other mechanics for now. Getting back to my problems with movement, it was immediately after switching to the new model I started to have these problems, and I really don't know what changed. It took a little bit of time, but eventually I switched from using a rigid body to a character controller, and this really improved the movement, but it didn't quite fix everything. And now the boat was flying again. Since the character controller already has a capsule collider included, I removed the original one that I had on the player still, and I read that rigid bodies and character controllers don't get along well, so I removed the rigid body as well. This still wasn't quite the end of the problems. 
Now my boat controller wasn't working so well, and the player turns into a ghost when they leave the boat. And more flying boats. Despite what the internet told me, I was able to fix some of the problems by adding the rigid body back, but leaving the gravity disabled. I also reduced the rotation speed, but I'm not sure that was entirely necessary. I really didn't expect to spend as much time as I did fixing these problems, but I was still able to get more done than I had planned for this devlog. I don't have a solid plan for the next couple of weeks yet, but I think I want to start working on selling fish, and maybe start working on limiting the time in a day. And if I make good progress on those, I might start working on the shop too. That's all I have for you, so if you enjoyed this devlog, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.